Hello YouTube, this is the 10th video in our JavaScript and, mine, and uh, Canvas Minesweeper de game development tutorial series. Uh, in this video we're going to be adding some controls and a timer. Um, we're almost to the end of the series here, but we got a couple more things to do. So the first thing we're going to do is go into our uh, body tag and inside of our controls div, we're going to add a div with the ID timer, which is going to be um, updated every second with a new value um, in seconds and then we are also going to have a div for the um, for the new button okay so first things first we're going to add some styles to that new button and we're just gonna say border one pixel solid gray border radius three pixels width 200 pixels height 50 pixels and we'll give it a background color of a light gray color and new hover will be background color um, we'll do six, six, or nine, nine, nine. and we'll also make this font size 12 pixels text align center okay so let's make that say new actually too new game all right and we will copy this for the timer. Okay. Um, let's just see what this looks like. 120 seconds have gone by, we'll say. Yeah. Okay. That looks all right. It doesn't really matter. We'll, we'll add um, cursor pointer. so we don't get that little typing thing. Yeah. Okay, it doesn't really matter what it looks like. We're just we're just kind of screwing around here. Um okay. So when we initiate here, we're going to call a function called uh timer. Okay. And we'll make that right here. And inside of it, we'll have set timeout. And we're going to have a function, and it's going to occur every thousand seconds. If you don't know the set timeout function, you can check out my JavaScript tutorials. That's covered in there. Um, okay, so uh, basically, what we're going to do is uh, get the Div, save it in a variable. And we're going to make var times equal to zero. Get our element timer by ID. Um, and then timer div dot inner. HTML is going to be equal to time, and we're going to update time. We're going to add one to it every second, basically. And then lastly, we're going to call the function on its own. Or we're going to call the fun we're going to call the function inside of itself. Okay. So now we have a working timer. 
um, first thing we want to just set the default value equal to zero. Okay. Um, and we will make a new variable or a new function. we'll just make this a little easier and say document dot get element by ID new dot on click is equal to function okay and um, basically what we need to do is set um, reset C or no, we need to reset bombs, clicked bombs, okay, so we're going to say bombs is equal to that, and we're going to call initiate again, and we're going to say clicked bombs is equal to zero. And time is equal to zero. Okay. Um, it should be good, and then I think we just have to draw the canvas again. So. Actually, init should do that for us. going on here okay we will do that a different way we can't really do that because we are trying to do that before JavaScript knows it's created so say a new game like we were going to do originally and we'll just do on click Okay, it's clicking a random box, <laughs> so um, let's see. Get rid of that console log. Um, I think we have to set clicked X and clicked Y and clicked mouse and clicked. negative one try to have a smarter little game here nope okay okay um don't think we actually need this or any of these uh, I think our problem is within the window.onClick function. Um, we need to set a variable basically um, when new button's clicked and then unset it after and it has been called. So I'm going to say var new game test is equal to zero. And 
basically this is only checking um, what's happening is new new the new button's being clicked and it's this function's being called and mx is equaling zero my is equaling zero or um, which is giving us a new um, location for to like check our bomb so so we need to only check for clicks if this has been set so and if the mouse has been clicked down in new game we will set our variable to zero or to one and then within init we will set it back gonna hope that works. We also have to fix our timer which is a little wonky. Okay so that didn't work. Um, one thing we can do is get rid of our variable here. Ignore that. Actually let's just undo that. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, we'll find that section again. And then if mx is within the bounds, which is um, s dot rows times. 30 times s dot width and m y is less than um sorry m y is less than s dot calls times s dot height okay those should be the right variables yes and that will make it so that that function is only called when you click inside. All right, so that should work for us now. Our only problem is our timer. Um, when we set a, we need to stop calling that function. We need to stop that function from calling itself um, over and over again. And we can do that by, instead of calling it on init, where's our initiation function, we can call it all the way at the beginning here. And then also when we start a new game. still speeding up um, and then we I guess we have to stop it from calling itself and then start it again um, I think we can just fix this by actually not calling it again nice that looks like it solved our problem Okay, uh, so in the next video we'll be working with uh, left clicking and placing markers uh, for bombs. And when the user places all the markers without clicking a bomb, then they win. Um, yeah, okay, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like.